Thank you. Uh, I am here to tell you today about a new tool chain that we developed that allows you to formally verify your web applications and especially your cryptographic ones while targeting WebAssembly. This is joint work with uh, uh, friends at INRIA and this is a collaboration that's part of the greater Everest project. All right, so the web today, it's 2019, the web is not just on the web, it's pretty much everywhere. And when you're writing applications these days, a natural choice is to use the web runtime, uh, in particular JavaScript. That's valid for websites, desktop apps that execute through the Electron framework. That's valid for server apps that execute through Node.js. And of course, there's browser add-ons and all sorts of situations when you find yourself using um, JavaScript and the web runtime as your target. And uh, my question is here, what do we do when we have security sensitive applications? Think about, say, a password manager, that would be the case, uh, sorry, the case of a browser add-on. Or think about Signal Desktop, that also runs with Electron, or WhatsApp Web, that runs on a website. And the situation is pretty dire when you want to have high confidence and high security results for the web apps that execute in that context. Uh, first of all, imagine that you have a custom cryptographic scheme that is not supported by the Web Crypto API or by your Node.js package, then you're pretty much on your own. If you have an ad hoc protocol, you're on your own as well. And oftentimes, because you're targeting JavaScript, it is extremely hard to reason about where your application is doing. You have a language whose semantics are notoriously challenging that have led to work such as defensive JS that are trying to compensate for the weaknesses in the semantics. You have no isolation guarantees. Anyone can modify your prototype. Life is hard. And I claim that JavaScript is a hostile target environment for security sensitive applications. And as such, that the JavaScript toolchain is inadequate when you want to have strong security guarantees for the programs you compile to your web runtime environment. What we're introducing in this paper is a brand new tool chain that allows you to compile from F-star, and in particular, its subset called Lostar, all the way to WebAssembly with a paper formalization that tells you clearly what is happening during the translation and a companion implementation that allows you to actually execute a translation and compile your programs from F-star to WebAssembly. In short, our contributions are as follows. We have a generic tool chain, both in terms of formalization and implementation that targets WebAssembly. We have applied this tool chain to an existing project, namely the Hack of Star High Assurance Crypto Library, which means that now you can use Hack of Star on WebAssembly for all of your cryptographic needs in a web environment. And we also wrote a formally verified implementation of the Signal protocol in FSTAR, and we compiled it to WebAssembly. This implementation is verified for functional correctness. It does the right thing. Memory safety, the WASM code is not going to crash with an out-of-bounds error. Site channel resistance and protocol security. There is no performance penalty and our implementation is ready to integrate if you're already using Signal because it offers the same API. In the remainder of this talk, I'm going to use Signal as a running example to go over all of these points and show you with a little bit more detail how we securely compile applications to WebAssembly. So just a little bit of background on Signal first. Signal is the, a secure communications protocol that targets, um, that is used by a bunch of applications such as WhatsApp, which claims over a billion users, Facebook Messenger, Skype, and Signal itself. Uh, one key feature at Signal is that it allows you to communicate asynchronously like many other protocols now do these days. It relies on a server with limited trust that holds some key material, and generally it goes along with a trust and first use policy. Let's start with a quick overview of the protocol in a very simplified manner. We have Alice, a server, and Bob. Alice is offline, she's grayed out, and Bob is sending public key material to the server. Later on, Alice wants to start chatting with Bob, so she gets the key bundle of Bob from the server and then proceeds to do what's called a triple Diffie-Hellman to generate a first key followed by another fancy step called a Diffie-Hellman ratchet that gives her two keys one of which is the root key and the other one is the chain key. This allows Alice to encrypt a first message using CK1, the chain key, along with her public key material and send it to the server. The message says, hey, Bob. In a third kind of step, which is called a symmetric key ratchet, Alice is deriving a second chain key for the next message that says, where's the secret stash, and also sends it to the server. Later on, Alice can continue sending messages. Alice can go offline, in which case Bob wants to check out what messages are waiting for him on the server, and he gets the first M1 message plus Alice's key material, 
performs the exact same fancy triple Diffie-Hellman followed by a Diffie-Hellman ratchet and is subsequently able to decrypt the message. Later on, Bob also gets the second message, performs the same step as Alice and is also able to decrypt the message. And if Bob wants to send some stuff back, Bob can do the Diffie-Hellman ratchet to generate a new root key. This is important. The chain key gives you forward secrecy and the root key gives you post-compromise security. And Bob says the secret stash is at Oakland, et cetera. So what are the key points about Signal? We're taking Signal as it is. We're just interested in implementing it. The key points about Signal is that Signal is a fancy protocol. It has many different steps. It used triple Diffie-Hellman and a double ratchet. And it involves a bunch of non-trivial cryptographic algorithms. The docs are online. So how are we going to use our framework to verify an implementation of Signal and compile it all the way to WebAssembly? There's four big steps. The first one is specifying the protocol. We build on previous work that was published at URS and P17, and we write a complete model of Signal using the Proverif symbolic verification tool. This tool says, your protocol looks fine. I can check that the protocol has integrity, confidentiality, forward secrecy, and post-compromise security. The way that these things look when you draw them in a paper is that you basically have a little diagram with messages and key protocol actions, such as initiate, that basically describe in a very precise manner what I was doing informally with Alice and Bob. So let's look at the initiate step, and this step in particular. What we do is that we take our protocol description that we wrote in Proverif, and we transcribe it into F star. So a word about F star. F star is an ML-like programming language, think OCaml F sharp, that allows you to perform program verification using SMT solvers to automate those proofs, such as Z3. The specifications that we write in F star are a little more detailed than the ones in Proverif. They might include some tags, for instance. And the transcription from Proverif to F star is currently done by hand, and we manually audit the two side by side to make sure that they're the same. We're hoping to automate it in the future. These specifications are not suitable for implementation or compilation, but we can still test them by extracting them from F star to a camel just for a sanity check and convince ourselves that we have the right specification to start from. The next step is actually implementing code that matches the specification. So if we're going to implement Signal, we're going to need some code to do the base cryptographic primitives. And for that, we reuse the existing Hackle star library. Hackle star is uh, driven by Inria. It's a set of uh, cryptographic algorithms that are written in that special subset of F-star called Lostar and that compile to C code. Hacklestar has been integrated in Firefox, the WireGuard VPN, Embed TLS, et cetera, et cetera. So the first consequence of our new tool chain is that Hacklestar becomes available on the wait. And that's just as a side effect because we're gonna need some cryptographic libraries. And we think that just that fills an important gap because Signal uses some custom cryptography. They have a custom uh, curve to 5519 operation. And some of the primitives that Signal uses are not even available in web crypto. So just that demonstrates the usefulness of having a compilation scheme for the cryptographic library from uh, F star to the web. Other advantages of just that, of just compiling Hacklestar to WebAssembly is that we now offer a synchronous API. The web crypto API that's available by default for web pages is asynchronous, and you can't always call asynchronous code from your code, so our library is callable in synchronous mode, and it also avoids the need for legacy libraries that one might want to use if they're running on Node and want to use the OpenSSL bindings for Node. So that's the first step for the implementation, repurpose the Hackostar library to be compatible to WebAssembly. The second step is now that we have the core building blocks, the core algorithms, is to implement the core operations of the signal protocol. So for instance, the initiate operation that I was talking about is something that we're going to implement in F star using the cryptographic primitives from Hackle star. The language that we're using for that purpose, and I've mentioned it before, is called low star. It's a subset of F star that would normally compile to C, but in this work, we repurpose the target of this language from C to WebAssembly. And Lostar is the language that has been used to write Hacklestar, the library of crypto primitives, but also a larger provider called Evercrypt, an implementation of Merkle trees, a cryptographic library for the Quick protocol, and many other software projects. So now we have an implementation of the Signal protocol written in that language called Lostar. The implementation of Signal uses 
Hackle star for the cryptographic primitives. And by default, because it's written in the star, it's going to compile to C. What we're going to do is instead of compiling it to C, retarget it to WebAssembly. So why compile to WebAssembly? First of all, WebAssembly is a new, safe, widely supported target for fast portable execution. Think of it as a bytecode IR for the web that is widely supported. All major browsers implement it, and there's even more use cases that are popping up. And the really good thing about WebAssembly is that it has clear-cut semantics. There's a PLDI paper that will tell you very precisely what the execution semantics of it are. It has an operand stack that is well-typed. It has structured control flow. You can jump into anywhere, and it has strong isolation guarantees. Your code runs in the WASM memory. And that means that all of the limitations that we had previously because we were targeting JavaScript are replaced in favor of something that has a lot more structure and that it has a lot more guarantees. WASM is supported as a target by many compilers, such as LVM, Mscripten, which also uses LVM under the hood, Mono, and it has been used so far for video games or large applications. So WebAssembly is happening, and now we're gonna use that as our target for our signal implementation. So just to sum things up, we formalize a verified pipeline from Proverif, which we transcribe to an F star specification. We implement that specification with efficient code, and now we compile using a dedicated compiler that implementation of signal to WebAssembly. Another thing to realize is that if you're using the default tools that are uh, available, you might have a little overhead, but with us, what we have is a very simple translation that fits in two pages of the paper. Um, it's compact, it's auditable and simple, which gives you a lot more assurance than if you were using existing tools. In terms of implementation, just like the formalization is small and fits in two pages, the implementation is equally small and only required 2,400 lines of a camel code added to the existing Kremlin compiler. It's not very sophisticated in the sense that it follows the two pages of rules from the paper very closely, and it's extremely regular. And what this means is that we now have a high assurance compilation tool chain to WebAssembly. Just as a point of comparison, the reason why we chose to implement our own tool chain rather than using the previous route, which would have been compile the star code to C, like say HackleStar is doing, and then use an off-the-shelf compiler to compile to WebAssembly is uh, twofold. First of all, there's a massive uh, TCB. These compilers typically use LVM and they're enormous and we don't want to trust all of these millions lines of code that are present in LVM. And also there's things that just don't exist. Like we have shown in the paper that if you use, say, mscripten to compile to asm.js, you may have some side channel leaks. So really, we don't want to trust all of that. And we want to rely on a small, compact, auditable compiler that goes to WebAssembly. The verification results are as follow. We show that there's memory safety. Our code is not going to throw an exception because the WASM code decided to read outside of its allocated memory. We show that the code is doing the right thing, that is that it matches the functional specifications. And we also show an absence of classic side channel leaks, namely using secrets for branches or using secrets for memory accesses by a dedicated check. So a way to sum up this work is that all of the core actions of the signal protocol are now implemented in a verified manner. And what we do next is that we take the existing lib signal, the one that's available readily on GitHub, and we uh, replace all of the core actions from the protocol with ours. This means that we offer the exact same API as would normally be available. We uh, just replace the core bits of lib signal with ours we pass the exact same test suite. And if you have an application that uses Signal and you want a version of it that has greater assurance, you can use our code as a drop-in replacement. In terms of performance, we have compared the performance of our implementation of LibSignal and the vanilla implementation of LibSignal. And what we see is that we're actually faster than the original implementation on several core operations. So the reason for this, and there's a reason, is that previously, um, because Curve 25519 is not included in web crypto, Signal would ship their own version of Curve 25519 compiled to a predecessor of WebAssembly called asm.js. And our implementation is faster, so that just means that by default, these actions of the protocol also become faster. 
for the actions of, of the protocol that involve primitives such as SHA and AES-CBC, these are offered natively in web crypto, meaning that they might have you know, vectorized implementations enabled, so it's really hard to beat them, so we're a little bit slower on these cases. If we take a uh, closer look at performance and look at individual cryptographic primitives to see how their performance compares between the Kremlin compiler and our tool chain that goes to WASM directly and the previous tool chain that would first generate C, then WebAssembly using one of these standard compilers, we are sometimes 30% slower to up to maybe two or three times slower. The reason uh, is explainable. Our compilation scheme is extremely straightforward and extremely small, and we favor auditability over optimizations. So it's natural that we don't like, do the same optimizations as the millions of lines of code that are in LLVM. It also turns out that these algorithms that are in the lower half are optimized for targets that have native support via intrinsics for 128-bit arithmetic, and that's not the case for WASM. Typically, a good crypto library would have several implementations of the same algorithm depending on the degree of support for the target platform. So for these, we expect the performance to improve naturally as we replace them with implementations that are good for 32-bit targets. And finally, it turns out that there's also a lot of rewritings that we can do on the source code to not rely so much on the optimizations that a C compiler would naturally perform. And we've done that for ChaCha20, and we only have a 30% overhead. So in conclusion, I would say that we have a tool chain and that is generally applicable anytime you want to target a web context and have strong guarantees for your implementation, desktop, server, or browser. In particular, this means that for crypto libraries, you can take our version of HackleStar compiled to WebAssembly and use it if you have new algorithms that are not readily available or if you have custom schemes. And finally, we demonstrated uh, with a novel implementation of Signal that you can write more than existing code and that you can write protocols and have protocols verified all the way to WebAssembly. We just put up the website, so if you want to take a look, our code is online as well as on GitHub. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have a question from Peter. Uh, it's not a question, it's a comment. Uh, Peter Neumann. Hi, sir. Hi. This is one of the most gorgeous applications of formal methods and automated tools that I have ever seen. I am delighted. Thank you, I'm blushing. <laughs> no, no, don't, but it's all available online, so we'll have to pick it up and see what we can do with it. Great, great, looking Thank forward you to so chatting. Much. Thank really you. Love it. More questions? Do you have a question? Yeah, please. Hi, I'm Andres from MIT. Could you say more about the timing side channel issues you found in Mscripten? Yes, we have looked at the curve 25519 uh, that was included in uh, Signal that was compiled to asm.js. And we found that uh, because when you compile to asm.js, it's JavaScript, and it's really a 32-bit target because it's using IEEE 754 as its number type. You cannot encode 64-bit integers in floating, in floats, right? So it's a 32-bit target, and that means that when you have 64-bit operations, you need to emulate them using a pair of 32-bit integers. And in one of the bits of emulation, the compilation scheme of Mscripten had added some shifts that were clearly not constant time. And so we like, looked at the generated code and found that in this emulated 64-bit multiplication on 32-bit integers, there was a side channel leak. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Then let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much. Thanks.